Hello everyone, and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about All You Need Is Kill. Because that's the original title that The Edge of Tomorrow was given. Or that's what it was previously published as, and that's what I'm going to be calling it for the rest of, like, for the rest of this video and title of this video. Even though the official title is Edge of Tomorrow, but I like the original title more because way cooler. <clears throat> anyway, um, when alien mimics invade, why are they called mimics? I have no idea. Keiji Kiriya is just one of many recruits shoved into a suit of battle armor called a jacket and sent out to kill. Keiji dies on the battlefield, only to be reborn each morning to fight and die again, and 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 again. On his 158th iteration, he gets a message from a mysterious ally, the female soldier known as the Full Metal Bitch. Which I think this is kind of a badass title. Which, you are you know you're all going to remember it. Is she the key to Keiji's escape or his final death? <clears throat> and, um, yeah. Um... And as, um, uh, uh, furthermore, I'd like to read the afterword, which is, um, I like video games. I've been playing them since I was a snot-nosed kid. Me too! I, I still do. I've watched them grow up along with me, same here, but even after beating dozens of games on the hardest difficulty modes, I've never been moved to cheer until the walls shake. I've never laughed, cried, jumped up, or striked a victory pose. Well, okay, that's where we kind of differ. My excitement drifts like ice on a quiet pond, swirling around somewhere deep inside me. Maybe that's just the reaction I have watching myself from the outside. I look down from above and say, after all this time I put in this game, of course I was going to beat it. See myself with a shit-eating plastered with a shit-eating grin plastered on my face, a veteran's smile. Only someone who'd been there themselves could appreciate. The ending never changes. The village elder can't come up with anything better than the same worn outline. Always uses, well done, whatever your name is. I never doubted that the blood of a hero flowed in your veins. Well, the joke's on you, Gramps. There's not a drop of hero's blood in my whole body, so spare me the praise. I'm just an ordinary guy and proud of it. Here, because I put in the time and I have the blisters on my fingers to prove it. It had nothing to do with coincidence, luck, or the activation of my wonder twin powers. I reset the game hundreds of times until my special attack finally went off perfectly. Victory was inevitable, so please hold off all the hero talk. This is the sort of thing that went through my head while I was writing. Without the help of a great many people, this novel would have never been made into this world. It's a dark story with characters dying left and right, but I'm happy how it turned out. I'd like to thank Yoshi, Yoshitoshi Abe Abe for so perfectly realizing the world of the novel in his illustrations. My chief editor, Miyuki Matsumoto, who... Uh, who went above and beyond the call of duty for the book after the glows, Takeshi Yamazaki for his wonderful design work, Jun Misuda and his wonderful friends for their help checking all the things military, and finally Shohei Kambayashi for his many insightful suggestions. Oh, I nearly forgot. Thanks to the good little boys and girl out there for sending me those jet black feeds. Uh, whatever. And, um, yeah. <clears throat> and, um, you know, like, like I said, like, that was, and that actually for this, for the most part, the kind of feeling that I was getting from both the, uh, book and the movie that this eventually wound up created. Of course, the, um, when they adapted it to the movie, there was a lot of changes, you know, I guess the first and most obvious one is Tom Cruise being 
played a man who's clearly not Japanese, <clears throat> as so many pointed out from the whole last samurai, you know, thing. But, um, yeah, anyway, um, and also it's changed from, like, in the book, it was like, a like, ali the aliens were, like, getting ready to, like, in, like, hit, based right outside of Japan, and they were constantly trying to lead assaults on the base, and, um, since they, uh, the, Japan has been making, like, advanced computer opponents to, for jackets, you know, of course they would send Americans in there to help them out, and yeah, whereas in the movie, you know, there's, there, everyone's stationed in London, and <clears throat> the, um, and they're trying to, like, invade France and, well, actually invade the whole of Europe and, um, try and take them out once and for all. And, um, there are also other changes, like, um, like, uh, it's, I don't want to get too much into spoilers, so, but, is, may, may, I mean, well, in the book, it's kind of leaves it a little more open-ended for a sequel to happen, whereas in the book, I mean, in the movie, it's all closed in, and, um, <clears throat> yeah, and, um, well, uh, you could say that this whole thing is, like, because of all the changes that were, like, made all over the place, you could say is like, the movie's a complete, total betrayal of the book and all this other stuff. But if I'm to, you know, go with the opinions of, like, the people in Nerd Alert and, um, you know, Brad Jones' Midnight Screenings, that they talk about how uh, it always, it all felt like a video game with all the times that the character was dying and coming back and figuring this stuff out. It was how it was, like, they, I think Brad Jones compared it to, like, Ninja Gaiden was like, okay, now I need to jump here, then jump here, then, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, so that it whole that the whole movie felt like is constantly reminding them of a video game with how many times they're he's retrying the same battle again and again until finally getting a victory. And since that's as you've heard from the um, little afterword in the book that that's exactly what the writer uh, Hiroshi Sakurazaka uh, was trying to you know, trying to make that was old mood that he was the whole theme or whatever, then I'd say it pretty much hits the whole mood and theme, like right smack where it's supposed to be getting it exactly right so all the little changes can be forgiven very easily. <clears throat> now all that's left is for me to tell which one I think is better, and, um, well, they both have their own, uh, you know, pluses, you know, the, um, the, uh, the book has, I think, does better world building, you know, the, like, there's, uh, this moment in, I think it's part three of the, there, they get into, like, all this, um, like, the, um, not, the, like, the beginning of the war, and talking about, like, the origin of the mimics as we know them. And when they first came to Earth, you know, talk about, like, what they are. They're supposed to be, like, silicon-based life forms, I think. And, um... And the whole, uh, the reason why Rita Vasquez... I mean, Rita... You know... There was a... I forgot what her full name was... Zrita some something or <clears throat> and anyway um <clears throat> and on her, like her hatred of the the whole bad guys and of the mimics and stuff but at the same time I kind of feel that the um movie does a better job just telling a basic story you know you have your main lead who, like, in the book, I kind of felt was kind of bland and also kind of a coward with how he, like, right on his third iteration, he tried to run away before getting killed by a mimic and 
in the fourth one he just committed suicide until his uh, fifth you know uh, iteration where he basically put a five on his hand and just sort of resigned himself well I'm stuck here so I might as well you know try killing the bad guys whereas in the um, movie he, you know the character William Cage which I think is kind of a funny little nod to the book because at the end the Americans call KG Killer Cage because they couldn't pronounce his name and um, <clears throat> and uh, in the book they just in the movie they just call him William Cage but um, anyway um, he, like he has an entire story arc where he starts out as like this complete blithering coward who you know tries blackmailing a general into not going into combat duty before getting beaten up and arrested and then like in his first iteration going into combat he's just crying his uh, guts out constantly like oh I can't do it and it's like and then like by the end of it he's a total complete badass who's kicking the crap out of all the enemies and um and uh, then there's uh, like the bad guys who and uh, who uh, don't necessarily have the have the um, <clears throat> same detail put into their origin of as, the, as in the book, but I think they're kind of cool because they kind of looks like it. Because like um, we're mainly it's because just ever all the bag all the uh, aliens look really cool, especially the alphas like. In the book, they don't really have, they don't really explain much about what's different about the ones that you kill that give you the time looping ability. You know, other than they just acted differently than the others somehow, I guess. And in the the move in the movie, they're like they're just way bigger than the other ones. They're big, blue, and yeah. And, um, also, as long as we're talking about the time loop, um, I like how they stick with it through the whole thing, like, even, like, after the, um, <clears throat> like, when she, when he gets into contact with Rita, they, you know, train and he helps him get stronger, whereas in, um, in the book, they just go with the complete rule breaking of the whole time loop that we've been getting ready throughout the whole, that we've been, you know, used to throughout the whole thing, by just having all of the aliens just have a surprise attack on the, on the, on the base that they're at, which forces them to get to their, you know, thing and, like, drive them off, which I really don't get, like, all this time is like, okay, well, it's going to be a time loop, like, the day before the invasion uh, I think it was of like one of the Japanese islands and then it's like last second rule change which kind of puts a whole betrayal on the everything that we've seen up to this point you know so apparently just out of nowhere hey we're gonna change everything yeah and have them attack the base whereas with this you know they keep Whereas with the movie, they keep to the consi they keep everything consistent, and they're always constantly in the time loop, and the only time they ever actually change, which is in the end, but it still kind of fits, sort of. I mean, the ending is kind of confusing. I mean, I, I say kind of confusing because, like, I can understand why the blood of, like, the, I think it's called the Omega, which is like the main brain that controls all of the mimics. You know, like, it dies, which, of course, it's going to wind up getting killed, like... And, um, you know, it sends Tom Cruise two days back, whereas before, when he only got it from the, the what Alpha, he was always sent back, like, one day back. I mean, the Alpha, when he, the Alpha is two days, then with the mimic with the omega is three days but <clears throat> um yeah you know like i kind of got that and and um 
<clears throat> and, uh, you know, they kept, for the most part, I mean, and, uh, like, for the most part, it was, like, the time loop, but then when they, he eventually lost his power to, like, get the, to, like, do the constant time looping, then in the, then in the end, he's, like, thrown back three days in advance, which I guess kind of makes sense, because the, I guess the Omega is more, you know, uh, just more timey wimey or whatever than the uh, Alphas, so I guess it makes sense that they would send them more back in time, though I don't get why the, you know, the, the Omega was the whole, I don't know. But anyway, um, in a way, like, you know, like, getting it, the whole thing in his blood and sending him backwards three days to the, where the beginning of the movie was at. But, you know, for the most part, it's like, um, yeah, but anyway, um, my big rating for both the movie and the book is both five out of five. Definite recommendations, even like, Actually, I'd probably give the book a 4 out of 5, because the whole ending with that makes even less sense than the ending and the whole climax of the last bad, last thing makes even less sense than the ending of the, of the movie, as well as being inconsistent, you know, and, uh, yeah, you know, but either way, if you ever get a hold of the book, buy it, check it out. It's a very comfortable recommendation. It's very enjoyable. And with the movie, you know, a def like I said, definite 5 out of 5, definite recommendation. You know, it's got better humor, it's got better characters, you know, in my opinion, with like their own arc. And uh, I think it just tells a better, co more, inter more better story there. Anyway, um, next time I'm going to be talking about Star Trek parody with John Scalzi's Red Shirts. Until then, see you later, keep it awesome, have a nice day.